What is up, people? This is one of the key lessons of this unit, so buckle up and let's light this candle. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe while the music plays. The first thing I want to point out is that there is a negative or inverse relationship between the money supply and interest rates. We can see this illustrated on our money market model, which we'll explore a lot more of in part two. You can see that if the money supply increases and shifts to the right, the nominal interest rate decreases. So when the Fed increases or decreases the money supply, its real purpose is to affect nominal interest rates. Notice we're assuming that only actions of the Federal Reserve change the money supply. As you learned earlier, banks create money by making loans. So is this contradictory? It isn't, but it is an oversimplification. The Fed sets the monetary base, currency plus bank reserves. And since we assume that banks lend out all excess reserves, the Fed has such tremendous influence over the money supply that it's generally said that the Fed sets the money supply. While technically incorrect, it's close enough for our purposes. The Fed has a handful of policy tools at their disposal to affect the money supply and interest rates. But I have to warn you, here comes a plot twist. Banks don't always lend out all excess reserves, and monetary policy is conducted differently depending on whether we're in an economy with limited or ample reserves. An economy with limited reserves means that banks lend out basically all the reserves that they're allowed to, keeping only the required reserves and lending out all other dollars. In an economy with ample reserves, banks keep lots of reserves on hand regardless of any reserve requirement. In fact, with an ample reserve economy, reserve requirements are basically irrelevant. And because of this difference in reserves, central banks will use different policy tools or some tools differently, depending on what type of reserve world they're in. All right, so let's talk about the tools of monetary policy, and we'll start by assuming that we're in a limited reserve economy. In that case, the Fed's tools are the reserve requirement, the discount rate, and open market operations. The reserve requirement is something we've already discussed. The Fed determines the percentage of bank deposits that cannot be lent out and must be kept on reserve. This directly determines the size of the money multiplier. As you'll recall, the money multiplier is one over the reserve requirement. So if the Fed raises the reserve requirement, it reduces the size of the money multiplier, which means the money supply shrinks and nominal interest rates rise. On the other hand, if the Fed lowers the reserve requirement, the money supply increases and nominal interest rates fall. The Fed can also change the discount rate, which refers to the interest rate the Fed charges banks to borrow money overnight. One of the roles of the Federal Reserve is to act as the lender of last resort. Recall that we have a fractional reserve banking system, and that since banks make loans, they may not always have enough cash on hand if a lot of depositors suddenly want to withdraw their money at the same time. One place banks can turn to is the Fed for an overnight loan so they can satisfy depositors and still meet their reserve requirements. When banks borrow directly from the Fed, they do so through something known as the discount window, and the interest rate that they pay is called the discount rate. A higher discount rate discourages banks from borrowing from the Fed, thereby decreasing the money supply and raising interest rates, while a lower discount rate encourages borrowing increasing the money supply, and lowering interest rates. The Fed also influences, but does not directly set, the federal funds rate, which is the interest rate charged for overnight loans between banks. Banks constantly borrow from each other, often so they can meet their reserve requirement every morning. The federal funds rate directly impacts the money market model and other interest rates throughout the economy. The Fed targets an interest rate range and is very good at hitting their federal funds rate target goal. The way the Fed influences the federal funds rate is through open market operations, which is the third and by far the most important and most commonly used tool of the Fed in a limited reserve economy. The Fed buys and sells securities, most often U.S. Treasury bonds, along with other participants like banks and brokers in the open market. It works like this. If the Fed wants to increase the money supply, they'll make an open market purchase. For example, the Fed purchases $1 million worth of securities from a bank. The Fed gets the bonds, and the bank receives $1 million electronically credited to their account as a reserve. Notice the bank's balance sheet. Previously, the bank was holding $1 million worth of treasuries, and now they no longer have those bonds, 
but instead they have that million dollars as excess reserves. Nothing happened on the liability side of the sheet. The Fed just electronically creates this money out of thin air and increases the amount of reserves the bank has, which increases the amount that banks can lend out, and in turn increases the money supply and lowers nominal interest rates, including the federal funds rate. If the Fed wants to decrease the money supply, they'll make an open market sale, selling treasury securities. For example, the Fed could sell $1 million worth of securities to a bank. The bank gets the securities and the Fed receives the $1 million and essentially takes that money out of circulation. This $1 million is no longer currency, deposits, or reserves. For all practical purposes, it doesn't exist anymore. Notice what happens on the bank's balance sheet. They now have $1 million worth of securities where they used to have $1 million in reserves. This means the bank has less to lend, and this decreases the amount of money that can be created, decreasing the money supply and raising nominal interest rates. So let's take a look at a model of the reserve market, because what happens on this market directly impacts what happens on the money market model that we're already used to. Okay, the y-axis is the federal funds rate, which we just learned is what the Fed is targeting when they make open market operations. It's the interest rate that banks charge other banks for overnight loans. The x-axis is the quantity of reserves. We have a vertical supply curve, which we'll label SR. It's vertical since the central bank has direct control over the quantity of reserves in the banking system at any given time. Now, here comes the demand curve, and stay with me, don't panic, I know it's scary looking. We'll label it DR for the demand for reserves, and I think we immediately notice that there are three distinct sections of the demand curve. So let's go through each one of these sections one at a time, and I promise it won't be so bad. The first section is the discount rate. The reason the demand curve never goes above the discount rate is because this is the interest rate that the Fed will lend to banks at. So why would any bank ever pay a higher interest rate than that to another bank? For example, if the discount rate is 4%, why would my bank ever pay you 6%? I wouldn't. So the discount rate effectively sets a ceiling for how high the federal funds rate can be. It won't be higher than the discount rate. See? So far so good. Next is the downward sloping section of the demand curve, and this represents economies with limited reserves like we've been discussing. Now the supply curve represents total reserves in the economy, and we know that the Fed controls this quantity. The most common way that they change the quantity of reserves is by making open market purchases and sales. An open market purchase increases the supply of reserves, shifting the curve to the right, and decreases the federal funds rate just like the Fed intended. And for completion's sake, an open market sale by the Fed would shift the supply curve to the left, raising the federal funds rate. Now the reason the federal funds rate matters so much is that it basically influences every other interest rate in the economy but we'll get into the policy goals of monetary policy more in the next section. The third section of the demand curve represents an economy with ample reserves. And notice what happens if we're in this section and the Fed conducts an open market purchase. The federal funds rate is unchanged. Same thing with an open market sale. No change in the federal funds rate. That means that in ample reserve economies, open market operations do not affect the money supply or nominal interest rates. Open market operations are still used, however their purpose is merely to maintain sufficient levels of ample reserves to make sure that reserves stay in this third section of the demand curve. This means you're going to have to read questions carefully that mention open market operations, because both their purpose and their effectiveness depend entirely on whether there are limited or ample reserves. What we know for sure is that open market operations increase reserves and the monetary base, and that open market sales decrease reserves and the monetary base. There are two tools that central banks use in conjunction in ample reserve economies to actually change the money supply and interest rates. The central bank can change its administered interest rates. That's just a super jargony way to say an interest rate that is set directly by the central bank. And in the ample reserves world, there are two of these, discount rates and interest on reserves. We've already talked about the discount rate. It's what the Fed charges banks for overnight loans. Interest on reserves refer to interest that the Fed pays banks for their reserves. Think of the Fed as like a bank for banks, and the Fed pays banks interest on their reserves. On our reserve model, the horizontal section of the demand curve at the bottom represents the interest on reserves that the Fed is paying. 
this interest rate acts as a floor for the federal funds rate that it won't fall below. Since the Fed is paying that interest rate, why would any bank ever accept a lower interest rate when they're lending to another bank? And the answer is, they wouldn't. So just like the discount rate sets a ceiling to the federal funds rate, the interest on reserves act as a floor to the federal funds rate. So to change the federal funds rate in the ample reserve world, all the Fed actually has to do is change their administered interest rates. If they want a lower federal funds rate, then they just decrease the discount rate and interest on reserves. On our model, both interest rates decrease, and look at that, we have a lower federal funds rate. Let's go ahead and get the money market model back on the screen and point out that in an ample reserve economy, lowering the administered interest rates increase the money supply and lower the nominal interest rate. If the Fed wants to raise nominal interest rates, they do the opposite. Raise the discount rate and interest on reserves, and that would increase the federal funds rate, which then over on our money market model shifts the money supply curve to the left, raising the nominal interest rate. So that's part one, basically all the nuts and bolts. Part two is why this is all so stinking important. So until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and to ring the bell, and check out the description for a link to the answers to the practice questions on the screen, as well as the notes for the unit and a great review book, Macro in 250 Words, and I will see you in the next video.